is the DOIO KB30-1 which is a 30 key macro pad with 3 knobs. It basically has a numpad, the arrow key section and 3 knobs all combined into one and it's also VIA compatible. So what that means is all the keys here can be fully customized to do what you want. Included in the box here is a yellow 2-in-1 plastic switch and key cap puller, a black type A to type C cable which is around 1 meter in length, and the macro pad itself which comes with 30 switches and plate mounted stabilizers already included. The build here is very solid and it comes out to around 650 grams. So the top case here is anodized CNC aluminum and you can see the numpad on the left, the arrow keys here in the middle and the three knobs with a small screen on the right side. Here is the side profile of the macro pad and the bottom acrylic base here is actually translucent so you can see through it. On the back here is three type C ports and honestly I'm not really sure what they do even after reviewing it. On the bottom there's four rubber feet here, the DOIO logo in the middle and a really nice matte finish on the bottom acrylic base. For the lighting on the macro pad you do get per key RGB and under glow RGB with six LEDs on the back of the PCB. Alright so basically you have four layers on this macro pad and you can see which layer you are on on the small OLED screen here. The first layer here is basically the normal functions of the macro pad so you have the numpad, the arrow keys here and the knobs. So the first knob controls media play pause, previous and next. Second knob scrolls the page up and down and the big knob here controls the volume. To change in between the layers here you just have to press down on the second knob and you can see it through the LED screen here. Currently layer 2 and level 3 here are empty so as you can see in the VIS software there is nothing assigned to the keys yet. The fourth layer is already pre-programmed to configure all of the lighting and RGB on the keyboard. So right above the arrow keys here, you can set the hue, the saturation, the speed of the RGB and the arrow keys itself control the bolt and the brightness of all of the LEDs on this macro pad. Moving on to the switches, mine came with Gatoron Milky Yellows which are quite okay to be honest and I quite like them. The plate mounted steps included are already pre-looped so that's one less thing to worry about and it even comes with an FR4 plate and 5 pin hot swap north facing PCB. As for the knobs, they are really solid because they are also anodized CNC aluminium both the small ones here and the big knob. The teardown or disassembly was quite easy, there's just a few screws holding all of the parts in place. So if you really wanted to mod it more or fix things in it, it should be quite easy to open up and do. So here is the top case, a super nice solid piece of anodized CNC aluminium. Here is the FR4 plate with all the switches installed. And there's surprisingly a piece of plate foam here for the sound dampening. Here is the north facing hot swap PCB, the small LED screen on the top right and the three knobs here. And also connected to the PCB are the three type C ports at the back. So I wasn't able to take out the PCB from the bottom acrylic base but there's basically just 6 LEDs here and the hot swap sockets are Gatoron. Alright to match the black anodized finish here I'll be pairing it with the white and black echo SAL profile double shot keycaps. And of course I will be only using the numpad and the arrow keys here for this macro pad.
So is this macro pad necessary? And the short answer would be no. But I think it's perfect to pair up with a 60% keyboard. So if you are a 60% keyboard user and you really need a numpad and arrow keys, adding this to your setup might be perfect. And for me, I just like to have programmable keys so I can set up shortcuts and macro keys for editing and basic daily use. So do check out the links in the description below if you are interested in this macro pad and thanks to WhatGeek for sending it over. And that wraps it up for this video. Leave a like if you liked it, dislike this video if you didn't like it, subscribe to my channel if you haven't and you can watch other videos I've done on the channel.